three forty meter per second. So the distance, how can we calculate the distance for echo should happen? Distance for echo should happen is equal to what is the what is the equation for distance? Distance is equal to speed into time that is equal to what is the speed 340 into what is the time 1 by 10 that is taken as 34 meter so the sound should travel a minimum of 34 meter the to uh, minimum of 34 meter to echo should happen so for an echo should happen the sound must travel a minimum distance of 34 meter that is 17 meter one side and 17 meter other side that is the incident light should travel a minimum distance of 17 meter and the reflected sound should travel a minimum distance of 17 meter that means mm, the total distance is 34 meter that's all about echo the regular repetition of sound due to multiple reflection from the ceiling floor and wall of a hall is called echo and the time interval between the original sound and the reflected sound is 1 by 10 second then from uh, the previous knowledge that means the speed of sound in air is 340 meter per second so the distance for echo is we can calculate that speed into time that is equal to 340 into 1 by 10 that is equal to 34 meter so that's all about echo The next time we want to discuss is reverberation. Reverberation. The persistence of The persistence of sound inside a hall due to multiple reflection multiple reflection even after even after the source has cut off the original sound. The persistence of sound inside a hall due to multiple reflection even after the source has cut off the original sound is called a reverberation. So due to multiple reflection there will be a regular repetition of sound inside a hall. That means there will be persistence of sound. The persistence of sound inside a hall due to the regular repetition of sound. That means the regular repetition of sound means the multiple reflection. So due to the multiple reflection there will be a persistence of sound inside a hall. That process is called reverberation. These two process, that means echo and reverberation, both are confusing to a list, both are confusing to listeners. So to neglect echo and reverberation, there will be a lot of procedures are done in halls and in theaters and in auditorium. As we know that there will be sounding boards are there, there will be curtains are there, there will be a lot of sound absorbing materials are there. These all are placed inside the hall or inside the auditorium or inside the theater is to reduce echo and reverberation. And this will create some noise. Noise is, means unwanted sound. To reduce echo and reverberation, these all things are done in halls, theaters and auditoriums. That is the peculiarity of echo and reverberation. Okay. Now we are going to discuss about the applications of multiple reflection or otherwise we can say that the uses of multiple reflection uh, the first use is it is used uh, the principle is used uh, 
and doctor a stethoscope so how it is used in stethoscope the thing is that stethoscope is used to identify the sound produced from inside the body so due to the multiple reflection the doctor can accurately hear the sound produced from heart and lungs so in stethoscope accurately multiple reflection is used the second one is loudspeakers that simply means the loudspeakers means uh, the megaphones so the sound produced from the megaphones as you all know that there will be megaphones are of this shape the sound produced from the megaphones uniformly distributed to each area that is due to the multiple reflection inside the megaphone there will be multiple reflection and the sound emitted from the megaphones reached uniformly to everywhere uniformly to everywhere and the third one the main application is that as you all heard about in the previous section i am already taught that i already told that uh, for the making of uh, auditorium theaters halls there will be curved surface are there what is the use of that curved surface the sound will reflected in that curved surface and reaches the audience uniformly reaches the audience so the peculiarity of the hall peculiarity of the theater peculiarity of the auditorium and also in the auditorium somewhere there will be sounding boards are there and the shape of the sounding boards is curved sounding board to, because the curved sounding boards are placed there because due to multiple reflection the sound reaches uniformly everywhere inside the hall everywhere inside the auditorium everywhere inside the theaters etc these are the uses of uses of multiple reflection it is used in stethoscopes uh, multiple reflection is used uh, and then megaphones then again the curved sounding boards and the walls and ceilings of the halls theaters auditoriums etc are curved it is due to the it is uh, it is used as a multiple reflection process because in the multiple reflection process the sound can hear uniformly uniformly to each and everywhere inside the hall inside the theater or inside the auditorium then we want to move to another subject called another area called range of hearing range of hearing means uh, a human body our human ear a human not human body a human ear can hear sound from 20 hertz to 20000 hertz that is 20000 k hertz means 20 kilohertz okay 1 kilohertz is equal to 1000 hertz that's why 20000 hertz is equal to 20 kilohertz a human ear can hear a sound range between 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. Now, the sound below, the sound below 20 hertz is called a infrasonic sound, infrasonic sound, infrasonic sound. Uh, Rhinoceros uh, will produce sound of infrasonic sound and then the sound sound above above 20 kilohertz that is 20000 hertz is called a ultra 